the monarch butterfly is at serious risk of disappearing. The number of monarch butterflies that made it to Mexico last year was so small that many now question if the population will ever rebound to its previous size. The insect's numbers have been in a free fall for the past 30 years, and this season is the worst yet. Two big reasons cited their primary food source, the milkweed, has been disappearing, along with what logging has done to their forest habitat. Rich London, this is part four of a five-part video series on how to raise monarchs. Part one, we showed you how to identify milkweed and find monarch eggs. Parts two and three took you through what you have to do then for the egg to get it to hatch and then also caring for the caterpillars. Now we're at part four. The caterpillar is about to go into chrysalis and we're going to show you that. We're going to talk to you about what J-hanging is and then we're going to actually show you the caterpillar transforming into the chrysalis, which I think is one of the most amazing things about this animal. In addition to that, we're going to deal with the issue of crowding. Now, to be honest, in this stage, there's not a lot of work that you have to do, but if you are taking care of multiple caterpillars at once, then you might get a crowding issue, and we'll show you how to deal with that. So, let's go ahead and get started. At the end of the fifth instar, your caterpillar is going to seek out a nice, stable place for it to form a chrysalis. It's going to look for a place where there's no real motion and it won't be disturbed, something secure. It's then going to build a silk pad and it's going to attach its back end to that silk pad. And it starts to do something that we call J-hanging, hopefully for obvious reasons. It's going to remain in that J-hang for about 24 hours and it'll be motionless. Sometimes a little bit more sometimes a little bit less than 24 hours. Again, as with everything with this animal, it's temperature dependent. Here's one jay hanging and there's another that's looking for a good spot to do the same thing. Once it's been motionless for about 24 hours, it then starts to do a little bit of twitching, which lets you know that the next change is about to happen. You see subtle little twitches as it starts to make the skin loose off of the chrysalis body. Another thing that lets you know that action's about to happen is that the tendrils will wrinkle and shrivel, really letting you know that the caterpillar is finished with this skin and is about to shed it and be rid of it. Okay, now before we go any further, something that I want to get straight is the plural term for chrysalis. As I, I didn't know it for a long time and I looked it up and you've got two versions. You've got chrysalises and you got chrysalides. I much prefer to say chrysalides rather than chrysalises. Saying chrysalises is just too silly for me. So I'll go with chrysalides and you'll hear me say that plenty of times. Now after it's been j-hanging for about 24 hours, a little bit less than 24 hours, it's going to go into the chrysalis. What we're going to show you now is two different caterpillars that are going into chrysalis and we're going to show you one at real-time speed but have elapsed footage and then on the other side of the screen on the right side of the screen we're going to show you the entire thing at sped up footage so we can see the whole transformation and it's really amazing really surprising also something that we might as well mention is that there's a difference between a chrysalis and a cocoon a cocoon is something that a larval animal usually moths will build around themselves so the cocoon really isn't the animal it's something that it has built around it instead the chrysalis actually is the animal that chrysalis is inside of the caterpillar. And the caterpillar molts the skin off and slides it off, and underneath is the chrysalis. That's really awesome.
may have noticed that last bit where the chrysalis wiggles until the skin falls from it. Now the chrysalis is very soft and needs to tighten up. In this time-lapse footage you can see some of the top part kind of pulling up and shrinking, pulling the rest of the chrysalis up with it. During this time also the chrysalis is starting to dry, but right now it's very vulnerable. It's going to remain soft for several hours. During this time also the chrysalis then cannot be disturbed by anything that needs to be allowed to dry. Anywhere from 12 to 24 hours later, the chrysalis will have hardened. You can see the jade green and gold. Okay, so the chrysalis is formed, and after that, you don't really have much that you need to do if you're only taking care of maybe one, two, three caterpillars. But if you're taking care of a lot more than that, you might run into something like this. You can see what I've got going on here is a little bit of a crowding issue. I've got plenty of chrysalides that are very close to each other. And not only close together in location, but close together chronologically speaking. They went into chrysalis on the same day, and so they're going to come out the same day. Now that can cause an issue, because when the female comes out of chrysalis, she needs to let her wings dry. And her wings are very fragile at that time. She'll hang on the chrysalis and pump fluid into the wings and let it dry, and during that time, if anything disrupts or disturbs her, it could damage the wing permanently. If there's right next door to her another monarch coming out, that monarch could interfere with her drying of her wings, they could interfere with each other, one could cause the other to fall, or both could fall. And so we've got to take care of that crowding problem. Something I like to do is once they form a chrysalis, I'll mark down the date that it went into chrysalis, and then because I'm using these storage containers, I'll have a little data guide as to what day which chrysalis occurred and so then I can keep track of which ones are going to emerge first and it's from an overhead perspective so if I've got these three down here that means right over here I've got three chrysalides. When the caterpillar before it goes into chrysalis and the caterpillar's up on the top it spun a lot of silk all the way around the chrysalis area in order to securely hang it. What we're going to do is we're going to use that silk to our advantage. We're going to remove the chrysalis and pull the silk off with us and that's going to help us to hang the chrysalis elsewhere. Before we do this, something also worth mentioning, if you notice, just about every single chrysalis is pointed in the same direction. They're all facing the same way, except for this one. Not sure what happened there. But the caterpillar tends to face away from light, incoming light, when it forms, when it goes to J-hang. And then when it forms a chrysalis, they all seem pointed about the same direction. Now, of course, great care should be taken when you go to do this but you might be surprised as to how sturdy these really are on there. This guy's the oddball, so we'll start with him. I'm gonna use the tweezers right at the very top and then just give it a very gentle, slow, with steady force pull. You can see some of that silk is coming off of there. I don't wanna take all of the silk because some of that silk might also belong to the other chrysalides and I'm gonna need that for later when I remove them. Okay. We're going to take that extra silk and we're going to use it to help hang the chrysalis. I'm going to use a clasp to hang the chrysalis on a string of yarn. and I don't want to actually hang it by the black part of the chrysalis, so I'm going to wad this silk up into something a little bit more ball-like, a little bit thicker, that the clasp can easily grasp onto. That way the chrysalis is still just hanging freely but the silk is securing it to the clasp, which will then be hanging from a piece of yarn. So being very careful, make sure you don't drop the chrysalis. You can clasp it on there. You can see I'm using binder clasps, but certainly other ones that can hold it properly would work as well. Once it's hanging there, I also like to wedge in a little piece of note card that has the date that it went into chrysalis on. That's why I like using these binder clasps, because I can just stick that little note card into that portion that's open for it. The date is important to me because first I want to know roughly when this chrysalis is going to emerge and then also if I'm doing this to multiple chrysalides I can easily see which are going to emerge first and when I hang them next to each other 
I want to try to make sure that there's at least two days in between the dates that they went into chrysalis. That way there's going to be at least two days in between the time they emerge, so that way none are emerging right next door to each other. Now this is just one way of doing it. I've seen also people online using cork boards and push pins to hang their chrysalides, and that'd be fine too. I just decided to do it this way. Okay, so there you have it. Either your one chrysalis is ready to go, or your 35 chrysalides are hanging and safe. You've got about 11 to 12 days now to wait until you actually see some action. Again, that can always vary depending upon the temperature, but from my previous data, it's been almost 11 or 12 days on the spot. You'll know that your chrysalis is about to hatch and emerge the adult because it'll turn translucent the day before. And that's where the next video, part five, is going to pick up. We're going to show you that. We're going to show you the adult actually emerging, talk about the wings drying, teach you a few things also about the monarch you might not have known about, and then show you how to release it. So be sure to watch that next video. As always, I encourage comments, questions, and stories of your own raising of these monarchs. So we'll see you next time.